Hi, and welcome to ReadHelp, an information support forum for people with dyslexia, perceptual dyslexia and hyperlexia and for parents with children with these conditions. Today we're joined by Dr. Paul Whiting, an expert in the field of perceptual dyslexia. Paul, what can you tell us about this condition? Well, by perceptual dyslexia, we're really talking about people who have a visual perceptual difficulty. There are auditory perceptual difficulties, and they are difficulties with interpreting the sounds that go to make up words. But we're talking about visual perceptual difficulties. And this is where a person looks at the page of print, and the print doesn't stay stable and clear and sharp and easy to see and reading becomes visually uncomfortable for them. Uh, so that's a very specific type of, of dyslexia and it may be coupled with other types as well. So you may have a visual perceptual dyslexia and an auditory perceptual dyslexia and there may be some other things involved in it as well. The trick is always to work out what am I dealing with here uh, we can say dyslexia, but now we need to be, get more specific in order to know how to help the okay. person. Okay, great. Paul, I've also heard of a condition called Erlen syndrome. Is that the similar thing? Erlen syndrome is the same as a visual perceptual dyslexia, yes, and it's also called scotopic sensitivity syndrome. Any of those names will do. Um, it's called Erlen syndrome because the psychologist who first uh, discovered how to help with this problem was called uh, Helen Erlen. Um, I've, I've heard that uh, diet is a factor. Is the food that a, a child eats important to, to their reading? I don't think it is with a, a dyslexic child. You often find that it is with a child who has, for example, an attention deficit disorder. Uh, diet is often helpful there. And sometimes, even with dyslexic children, supplementation is in helpful, like with omega-3 okay. supplements, uh, for example. Um, but uh, you, you need to test that out, and it is possible to do that by uh, seeing whether the child does react to certain foods badly. But what would a parent notice if a child has this condition? Often parents don't notice, and teachers don't notice, because we don't know what questions to ask and what to look at. But you will notice with a child who's starting to have this kind of difficulty that they don't like to keep looking at the page of print. The reason for that is, for most of them, the white background is just far too bright and it becomes visually uncomfortable to keep looking at the page. If they do keep looking at the page, then the print starts to do strange things. It may just go blurry, it may seem to move, it may seem to jiggle or vibrate, it may even seem to swirl around. It's different for different people, but it all has to do with this inability to cope with the bright white of the page and the dark black of the print. Now, what will you notice? Well, you'll notice the child doesn't like to look at the page. He keeps looking away. You'll notice often that he's squinting or blinking a lot. He might be rubbing his eyes after he's been reading, or he might even complain of headaches. It's very common for these children to have a headache later in the day when they've been at school. It just develops as they keep doing this close work without appropriate assistance. Okay, fantastic. Paul, thank you very much for your time today. If you're looking for more information on this or any other literacy condition, please visit our website at readhelp.com.au. Thanks for your time.